width. Okay. So we're going to um, we're going to come to a sitting position, but at the front of your chair this morning, rather than all the way back. So that sense that you you do have your pelvis resting on the chair, but we haven't got our bottom anywhere near the back of the chair, and we're not leaning against the chair. I'm going to turn sideways just to show you briefly. When you come to this sitting position, if we if we sit down and kind of expect to lean back, we'll come on to glute muscle. If we use the body's kind of sitting movement, which is this one, as you come down, you'll stick your little tail out anyway and you'll find your sit bones and then you'll come to an upright sitting position. So notice that you are on your sit bones, those kind of jabby bits at the bottom of your pelvis. And if you're not really sure, always absolutely fine to just move out of the way any of that extra muscle and scoop it out and you'll find your sit bones and it'll have tilted your pelvis ever so slightly. Then that lets you position your ankles underneath your knees and then have your ankles and your knees roughly ball and socket hip width apart. If you're not sure where your ball and socket joint is, if you put your thumb onto the crest of the front of your pelvis and then stretch out your pointy finger and bring your pointy finger to your pubic bone, then your middle finger, if you bend it and just poke, that's roughly, and you can see that it's roughly in the middle of my thigh. So that's kind of where the ball and socket joint is. So coming to the front of your chair, Knees, ankles lined up with your ball and socket joint, feet flat to the floor, pelvis that little bit tilted like you've got your tail sticking out behind you and you sit tall. And then bring your hands um, to Padma Mudra, the bud version. So we were doing this on <clears throat> Tuesday morning. So you bring the heel of your hand together, the, the tips of the fingers, the sides of the thumb, it's like you're holding something very delicate um, in the palm of your palms of your hands, like maybe you scoop something to pop it out the window. Brilliant. So this is the bud, and to make the flower, you keep the thumb and the little finger and the heels of the hands together, and you stretch the fingers out. That's what it looks like to make the flower. Okay, so bud and flower. Zebra. And holding your bud shape with your hand, your mudra, somewhere roughly in front of the heart centre, your yoga heart centre, that chakra point. Close your eyes. Have a think about the fact that your gaze is, I know your eyes are closed, but it's as if you were gazing forwards. It's a little bit of a tendency to look down towards the floor. And when you do that, you begin to curl the back forwards. So if we sit with our eyes closed as if we're looking forwards, we'll be much more upright. Imagine the crown of the head lifting to the ceiling. <clears throat> So in this sitting position, we're using our abdominal muscles and our pelvic floor muscles. We don't need to check in with them or do anything to them. They have to work for us to be here. So sitting upright is a very good way to maintain the strength that we need in our body to move about safely. So perhaps you have a couple of sighing out breaths and you let your shoulders settle down from your ears. A bit of softness down each arm to the elbow. A little bit of softness from the elbow to the wrist. And then notice the hands holding the bud Padma Mudra. And sometimes when we first come to 
the mudra shape, we hold it with a little bit of tension and tightness. Notice that you can really soften the hands and the fingers and still hold that shape. It's not held very much at all, just a very soft, delicate shape that allows softness all the way down the arms and the tips of the fingers. Notice as well with your out breath, you can let yourself arrive quite heavily into your seat. You can really start to notice your glute muscles and your pelvis resting heavily on the chair. Become aware of your breath. And notice whereabouts you feel your breath. So if you've been dashing about this morning, the breath might be quite high up in the lungs. You might notice the movement in your ribs more. So be aware of it, the in and the out breath, and then begin to slow the breath a little. Just making it a touch softer, a little bit longer, a little bit slower. And allow the breath to come into the very bottom part of the lungs, like you breathe into your abdomen. So can we find our soft, easy, resting breath. And whenever you're ready to, with your next in-breath, making the flower mudra, and as you breathe out, making the bud mudra. Breathing in, making the flower mudra, and breathing out, making the bud mudra. And keeping that rhythm going, in your breathing speed, Simply noticing the movement of the fingers coordinated with the breath. And the next time you breathe in and make the flower mudra, bringing your hands up just in front of your eyebrow centre. Breathing out, bringing the bud down in front of the heart centre. Breathing in, flower mudra up roughly level with the top of your head. Breathing out, bud mudra. Breathing in, taking the flower mudra as high up towards the ceiling as your arms are happy to reach. Breathing out, coming back down to the heart centre with the bud. Breathing in, eyebrow centre, flower. Breathing out, bud to the heart. Breathing in, flower to the top of the head height. Breathing out, bud to the heart. Breathing in, flower as high up as you want to go. Breathing out, bud to the heart. One more of those, so breathing in, flowers the eyebrow centre, breathing out, bud to the heart, breathing in, flowers to the top of the head height, breathing out, bud to the heart, breathing in, taking your flower up as high as you want to reach, and breathing out, bringing the bud to the heart. Holding the mudra there just for a moment. So we check in now with how the body's feeling. Anything that feels a little bit tight. More importantly, notice anything that feels sore or injured and give yourself permission to move in the right way for you.
And after your next out breath, releasing your mudra, you might wiggle your fingers and move into your wrists a little bit. So we're going to lean forward and bring the hands onto the sides near the knees. So you can cross your lower arms in front of you and dangle yourself forward, looking at the space between your feet. And then slowly let the head drop so you feel some lengthening in the back of the neck. And the next time you breathe in, start to lift your body up until it comes all the way up. And as you breathe in, taking your arms wide. Breathing out, a little scoop forwards. Breathing in, arms wide. Breathing out, the scoop forwards. And breathing in, arms wide. How far forwards you reach just depends on what's going on in your back and how everything feels. Next time you breathe in and arms go wide, we're gonna turn, you breathe out. Doesn't matter which way you go, breathe in to come back to center. Breathe out, turn the other way. Breathe in, come back to center. Breathe out, turn. Simply noticing how the spine wants to turn. Turning on an out breath and breathing in, coming back to center. One more to each side. And your next in-breath brings you back to centre, breathing out, taking the arms down, breathing in, reaching the arms all the way up, lift the chest a little, look towards the ceiling with your in-breath, breathe out, lean forward, bring your arms all the way down, so your fingertips reach to the floor ahead of your feet, then breathe in and bring the arms all the way back up again. Breathe out, gently sway, breathe in back to centre, breathe out, gently sway and breathe in back to centre. Another one to each side, Just noticing, not going too far, warming up the side of the body and next time you breathe in, arms come back up. So we're going to breathe out and bring the arms to kind of cactus warrior goddess, but we're also going to stick a knee out to the side and lift the leg up. And then bring the arms up and the leg back to centre, over to the other side, cactus arms, and stick a knee out to the side. Arms up, cactus arms, knee out to the side, cactus arms sorry, arms up, then cactus arms and knee out to the side and take your arms all the way up, make your bud, breathe out, bud down to the heart, breathe in flower to the eyebrow centre, breathe out, bud to the heart, breathe in flower to the top of the head, breathe out, bud to the heart. As you breathe in and take the flower up, lift the chest, Lift the gaze, reach, breathe out, bring the bud back down and rest it into your lap and curl forwards again. Let your body dangle. And then with your next in-breath, bringing the body up, sweeping the arms wide, breathing out, reaching forwards. Breathing in, arms wide, and again, how much you breathe for, uh, so you reach forwards with that out breath, entirely up to you, so a chance to really explore how the body is moving. Next in breath brings your arms wide, and we turn, so out breath, you turn, in breath, back to centre, out breath, you turn. If you've not got a lot of space for your arms, you can turn with cactus arms, it's absolutely fine. You might turn with your arms completely out at shoulder height. Using your out breath to turn, your in breath to come back to centre. And we do roughly three going in each direction. You breathe in, come back to centre, breathe out, arms come down, breathe in. Sweep the arms all the way up, look up to the ceiling, breathe out, reach forwards, 
Reach as far forward as your body will let you with your fingertips touching the floor and breathe in, come all the way back up, arms above your head. Breathe out, little sway, breathing back to centre, breathe out, sway the other way. Two more sways to each side, noticing your buttock muscles on the chair, encouraging them to stay heavy on each side. So you're really using the muscles in your body and not letting your pelvis tilt too much. Well, we've done roughly that number, haven't we? So we come to cactus and a knee and back with the arms up, cactus and a knee, the other side, arms back up. Let's do one more of those to each side, a cactus and a knee. Brilliant. Next time the arms go up, bring your hands together, bud all the way down to the heart. Breathe in, eyebrow centre flower. Breathe out, bud to the heart. Breathe in, eyebrow, uh, sorry, top of the head flower. Breathe out, bud to the heart. Breathe in, take the flower as high up, have a look. And breathe out, bring it back, rest your little bud in your lap and lean forward. If you might completely lean forward this time, you might fold yourself onto your thighs and dangle your arms down, dangle your head. With your next in-breath, lifting your body, sweeping your arms wide, Breathing out, coming forwards. Breathing in, arms wide. Breathing out, coming forwards. Breathing in, arms wide. Breathing out, coming forwards. Breathing in, arms wide, return. So out breath, turning. In breath, back to centre. Out breath, turning. In breath, back to centre. Two more to each side. Just noticing that we can Free up the spine a little bit with a twist. Whenever you're doing this kind of thing, it's going at your breathing speed, not worrying too much about what I'm doing and the speed. So when you get back to centre, breathe out, arms come down, breathe in, reach all the way up and then breathe out, reach forward, stretch and reach your fingers as far forwards as your body will let you just Touch them to the floor, then breathe in and take the arms all the way back up. And a sway to the side and back up to centre. Sway with your out breath and breathe in back to centre. If this doesn't suit your arms being up in the air, it's absolutely fine to have them here. And sway absolutely fine that they're here. So when the arms start to get tired, change the position. Fantastic. Then arms come back up. Let's do cactus and a knee. Arms up, foot down, cactus and a knee. Arms up, foot down. One more to each side with this cactus knee. Who knew that cactus have knees? Okay, brilliant. And take the arms up. Bud down to the heart centre. Breathe in, flower to the eyebrow centre. Breathe out, bud to the heart. Breathe in, flower to the top of the head. Breathe out, bud to the heart. Breathe in, flower all the way up, have a little look. And breathe out, bring your flower into your lap and have a little curl forwards. Sleeper. And then ease yourself up to sitting. We're still right at the front of the chair, hands to the knees, stick your little tail out, lift your chest, have some cat moves into the back, just curling into your forward bend and your back bend. So as you curl forward, you can look towards your lap, you can look towards your tummy button and breathe out. As you stick your tail out and lift your chest, you're breathing in. Super. And 
And after your next in-breath, and you come up to sitting, let's bring your feet back if they've wandered. My feet wander all over the place. Bring them back to parallel, parallel thighs and knees and ankles, hip width apart. Dangling your arms down by your side. Roll your palms out. Lift your arms a little bit away behind you. And come up with the right knee. Hovering it there. It kind of helps to lift the knee or keep it lifted if you bring your toes up towards your kneecap. Breathe. Lower the arms down and lower the foot down. Dangling your arms, rotate them outwards so the palms of the hands face away. Lift the arms up and away behind you and then lift the left knee. And breathe. Maybe draw the toes up to the kneecap. Notice if that helps. Brilliant. And then bring the arms down and the knee down. We're going to do a different mudra this time. So this mudra is you've got your thumbprint on your little finger and your ring finger nail and your other two fingers pointing up. So wings with two kind of long feathers at the end of your wings, that's what you've got. Okay. So we come back to that sitting position. Arms are dangling down by your side. If you make the mudra, I tend to refer to it as a bit of a victory V. Obviously the other way around, not so much. So turn the palms of your hands away behind, uh, out to the side, sorry and lift the arms up and away behind you. And then as you lift the knee up, you can sweep your wings up, lift your knee as high as it wants to go, and then sweep your wings back down and lower the foot down. Super. I'm gonna go sideways so you can see the action with the arms. Roll the palms outwards. As you sweep the arm away behind you, the knee starts to come up, the arm comes up, everything comes as high as we can reach it, and then you sweep the arms away behind you again and the knee comes down. Okay, brilliant. So let's try the right side again, palms face out, sweep the arms away behind you, up comes the knee, and then sweep the arms away behind you, slowly lowering the leg back down. Other side, sweep the arms away. Rotate the arms outwards as you lift them. Brilliant. Take them away behind you as you lower them and lower the leg at the same time. So one more to each side. I'd like your crane to go into slow motion. So picture those um, nature programs where they make those animals move in the slowest possible way so you can see all the detail of their movement. So rotating the palms out and slowly lifting the arms, slowly lifting the leg. Imagine those almost one little image at a time that come together as that movie clip. Hold it there just for a moment and then begin to lower your arms really smoothly and slowly and your leg comes down as well over to the other side. Just being aware of how slowly we can make this action happen because we're lifting against gravity. And then we're lowering back down and trying as you lower your arms and your legs down not to let gravity just drop those limbs but control everything that we're doing. Slide your hands to the front of your knees, have a little cat movement. Brilliant. And then sitting tall. Come up with your right knee and make some circling actions. Circle back the other way. And pop 
the foot to the floor, other side, lifting the left knee, circling actions, and then circle the other way. Brilliant, and pop the foot to the floor. Lift up with the right knee, take the leg out to the side, hover it there, draw your toes up towards your kneecap, Bring your knee back to centre and lower the foot to the floor. Other side, lift the knee up, left knee out to the left. Hovering it there. Bringing that knee back to centre and then lowering the foot to the floor. So lifting up with the right knee, put your hands underneath your thigh. My elbows are bent at this point, so I'm going to let my thigh come down until my arms are straight. But I'm going to try and hold the leg so that my arms aren't being used to keep the leg up in the air. Okay. Then have a quick check of your sitting position. It's ever so tempting to come forwards a little bit. So think crown of the head, back being lovely and tall. You've got the support of the fingers around the back of the thigh, but the thigh is working to hold the leg up. Draw the toes towards your kneecap and then take the toes to the ceiling and lower the heel back down. Toes to the ceiling, lower the heel back down. Super. Next time you lift the toes, hold, breathe. See how it feels to use leg muscles to release the hold of the hand if the hand wants to. Otherwise, keep it there, but try not to let the weight of the leg go into the fingers. Bend the knee, lift it up just a touch, lower it all the way down. Give it a wiggle and a jiggle, and let's try the other side. So lifting the left knee up, you want to put your hands underneath. If you can lift the leg quite high, you end up with your elbows bent. So lower the leg a touch so that your arms are straight, but you haven't got the weight of the leg in the hands. Toes come up to the kneecap and then take the toes to the ceiling and the heel back down. So the thigh stays in that same place in space. It's your lower leg that's coming up and down. Brilliant. Next time the lower leg lift, hold the lift. Notice everything that you've got to use to keep this here. Sit tall, be careful not to slouch. Maybe you let go of the leg just for that moment in time and then you bring the hands back underneath the leg, bend the knee, lift the knee and let it come all the way back down. And give it anything of a wiggle and a jiggle and a rub that you need to. Can I um, get you to, sorry I should have mentioned it, can I get you to grab a belt, a scarf, a strap, a dressing gown belt? Super. So if you put the strap onto the floor you can rest your the right foot, the ball of your foot, it's always good to have the strap around the ball of the foot rather than the arch of the foot because if you're using the strap quite firmly when you're moving the leg around, the arch of the foot much more delicate um, and more likely to feel the tug. So we know that we can lift our leg, so we don't need the strap to start with. So hold the strap just enough so it doesn't fall from your foot and lift the knee up. Then think about your back coming up straight and tall. Take hold of the strap underneath the height of your knee. Okay, if you're a bit too high, you'll, you'll have a lot of strain into your elbow and your upper arm. Draw the knee in a little bit more, maybe shorten the hold on that strap and then see how it feels to take the leg away and bend the knee and come in. Take the leg away. Bend the 
letting the knee come in. Hold it here for a moment. Left arm goes up. When we take the left arm up, notice that your spine goes tall again. So we then notice that we did slouch just a little bit. And then take that leg out. Bend the knee. Take it out. Hold it there. Just notice that you could take a little bit of the load into the leg rather than the arm holding the whole lot. And maybe take the leg out to the side. And back. Bend the knee and then release a bit of the hold on the strap so you can let the strap run through your hands. Take the leg down, arm comes down. Ease, move. You could lean forwards and have a little bit of a lengthening. When you lean forwards, you're going to lengthen into the muscles at the top of the back of the pelvis. They're working really hard when you're um, doing sort of balancing type of actions. So when you had to go at that little lengthening, we come back to put the strap on the left foot. So making sure it's on the, um, the ball of the foot, not the arch. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you're going to lift up with muscles because we know that we can lift the leg. Then you can take hold of the strap. Don't worry that the knee goes out to the side because that's more often about comfort and just where your ball and socket wants to go. Okay, so sit tall and then you can take the leg out and bend. And as we do this, we've got two things going on. One is thinking about length in the back and sitting upright. The other is using these leg muscles that we know we can do this with rather than so much tug into the strap, take the leg long whenever you're ready to see what it feels like. Just have a little move out to the side and back, bend the knee, loosen the grip on the belt so that the leg will come down. Brilliant. So option one is that we go back and have another go to the, set, the right side, the left side again with the strap. Some of you may fancy the idea of bringing the knee up, taking your um, index finger and your middle finger around your big toe. So when you do this, this happens because you're really reaching for the foot. So at this point then you want to be sitting up and see how it feels to take the leg out holding on to the big toe. If you get to about here, it's absolutely fine. It's not about keeping the leg long, but with the back curved, it's about where does my body go and exploring this movement and how we get it to be with the leg going long and straight, okay? If then you just think, oh, I tugs in my, the one thing it does do, to be honest, if this is new to you, it feels like you pull your big toe off. Um, so you, you learn to get used to that sensation, but that takes a little bit of time. I think it took me about three or four years to not feel like my big toe was actually going to fall off my foot when I held on to it. Um, so use the strap or use your hands on your leg. So we're going to draw up either with the strap or you can bring the knee in close and take hold of the toes. Notice your knee will probably go out to the side in order to get hold of your toes, that's fine. Sit tall and then ease the heel away. Know that it's absolutely fine to be using the strap. Super. So one of the things that you might be noticing, hug your knee in and then pop the foot back down to the floor. You might be noticing sound in your knee that probably sounds a little bit like um, somebody walking on gravel, but a little bit quieter. So when you've got hold of your toes, because of this length and the tightness, it might be as you lengthen the leg, this joint at your knee is being squashed. Okay, and that's where the sound comes from. So as you do this, think rather than I've got to get my leg straight, think I'm pushing my heel away 
and I'm drawing my heel back in. Because if you push your heel away, you'll keep that feeling of space in the knee joint. If you're hanging on to this and thinking, I've got to get my leg straight, you're scrunching the knee joint, if that makes sense. I know it's a bit of a, a, a mind over matter thing, but it does really help to think about pushing the heel away and drawing it back in to keep your knee less noisy and less gravelly. So you can have a go to the other side as well, and the left side at all. Bringing that knee up, holding onto the toe if you want to. Use the strap, just depends on what goes on with the movement in your ball and socket joint. And easing that leg away and back in. Brilliant. So we did that a few times just to road test out what's going on on that side. Chances are that we come forwards quite a bit. So once your leg comes down, sit tall, dangle your arms, rotate the palms out and just lift the arms away a little, just a little, because you get a small back bend, your back comes up tall because it's been like this, tugging, and that will feel a little bit better, countering what we've been doing. And then ease your arms down and notice your back stays tall. So, from this position, I'll just show you, we can draw our knee up, hold on to the toes. We can take an arm up in the air. That's going to help us keep our back tall. We can take the leg in front and we can take it out to the side. And we can bring it back and bend the knee and bring the foot down. So work to your measure. It's absolutely fine to have a bent leg and take it out to the side and have a little see how it wants to lengthen. It might stay here and it might go out bent and come back. But we're working on sitting tall. Anything at all. It's your shape, it's your body, it's your version of the posture. Have a go to the other side. So there's always that temptation as the foot comes up to reach the toes. So think about really lifting the knee. You could even hold the foot up while you take the toes. And then you know your back is tall. Arm comes up and then you can ease the leg away. And maybe out to the side, a touch and back. Just have a play about. Imagine doing this one standing on one leg as well. We're staying on the chair, lowering everything back down. So when you've done both sides, great. Have a bit of an easing cat. Breathe in as you stick your tail out and look up. It's like you're moving your tummy button forwards as well as you breathe in. As you breathe out, you tuck your tail, you look down, it's like you're moving your tummy button back towards your spine. Super. After your next in-breath, sitting tall. So we're going to, I'm going to turn my chair so you can see my legs. You don't need to move your chair. I do. So we're going to turn a quarter turn on the chair so that you've got the front edge kind of corner of the chair between your knees. So left foot, um, you want your left thigh kind of angled out to the side and your second toe pointing the same direction as your thigh bone. Okay, then your right leg, you're gonna move it out to the side so that you've got the inside edge of the right thigh facing the floor. If I use my strap simply to give you an idea of the line you're creating, that's the line, okay? So check where you are on your chair and have a little move about and a wiggle and an ease. 
your right foot, you ideally want to be working towards pushing the outside edge of that foot down towards the floor. Your left knee, you want it above your ankle. Okay? If you gently push your feet into the floor, notice you can firm up leg muscles. Some of you will push your feet into the floor enough to pretty much come out of the chair. And then you can soften the push of the feet into the floor and sit back down into the chair. So you can get this slight bobbing up. So if your legs are interested in working a bit harder this morning, you can push your feet into the floor. And although you're still feeling the chair, in parts of your legs and your bottom, your skeleton's kind of lifted out of the chair a little bit, okay? Let's bring the arms up, turn the palms to face the ceiling, elbows are a little bit bent, you can slide your shoulder blades down your back, then reach your fingers apart and turn your palms down. Turn your gaze to look down the middle fingernail of your left hand, Push your feet into the floor, soften your shoulders. So there's an intention of having your arms in this shape, but without tension, without tightness in your shoulders. Lovely. And ease your arms back down. If you're really bobbed out of your seat, lower yourself carefully down into the seat and ease the legs. So you don't need to swap places in the chair, we can stay at this side and just swap the leg arrangement around. So right leg, um, whichever direction that thigh bone is pointing, second toe goes in that direction and the ankle is underneath the knee. Your left leg is out to the side, inside edge of that leg facing the floor. Bit of a tendency to roll onto, particularly when we're sitting, to roll onto the inside edge of that left foot. So roll the foot so you can find the outside edge. And then let me alter this strap so you can see that kind of line, okay? That's roughly the line that you want to get your legs into. And if you push your feet into the floor, you can kind of lift up out of the chair if you want to a little bit, okay? Just play about with that, hold on to the chair when you need to. Push the outside edge of the foot into the floor, um, that bent leg um, foot pushes into the floor, arms float up. If you start with the palms facing up, you can wiggle your shoulder blades down your back a little bit. Then you get softness in your shoulders. Move your fingers apart and then turn the palms down. Turning the gaze so you look down your right arm, middle fingernail. You're looking for a drushti point. So a drushti translates as a kind of um, a focal spot, really, um, a place to put your attention. The, the drushti in this posture is actually about three or four inches beyond your fingernail. So you can focus there. I think it's really quite hard to focus on something that isn't there, so on fresh air. But you might kind of get that sense that you can picture where that would be and take your awareness to that space. Push your feet into the floor, softening your shoulders, making sure you're still breathing. And then float your arms down. Make sure if you need to hold the chair to lower yourself back in if you've bobbed out of it, then you do and ease back. So just while you're sitting, you might do a little bit of easing and moving. I'll show you how it goes to the other side again. So we find our, this is warrior two, so it's the archer um, who holds the bow. So we come back to our warrior two here, and then we're going to take the arm up and the other one down, just towards the back of the thigh, and come back to shoulder height, and take the arms up 
and back to shoulder height. We'll do a few of those and then we'll come back down, okay? So focus on your left leg being the one that's got the right angles at the knee and pushing the foot into the floor. And then it's your right leg that goes out. Hold the chair, wiggle, find that position that feels okay for the legs. Push the outside edge of your right foot into the floor. So once you get the legs feeling okay, you can be more or less bobbed out of the chair depending on how tired your legs are. They're going to feel quite tired because we were doing all of that other work earlier on. Float the arms up, palms face up so you can wiggle your shoulder blades down. You get this lovely softness. But then you add that intention of having the arms straight by moving the fingers away and turning the palms down. If you look down your left arm to that middle fingernail and steady your breath, and whenever you're ready to, an in-breath takes the left arm up, the right arm down, and an out-breath brings your arms back to shoulder height. So you can float the arms with the breath and ease. It's quite nice, I think, to breathe out as you reach up to the ceiling because you're having to work into the abdomen to make that back bend. You can do as many of those as you want to. Maybe if you're really powering your thighs, they get tired. Arms to shoulder height, lower yourself back down. Make sure you sit into the chair carefully. Hold on to the chair if you need to. Legs come back. This is where you might want a little bit of a wiggle in the knees about and a move, and then we'll swap the leg arrangement over. So it's the right leg. Is the one with all the right angles and that thigh bone wherever it points out the second toe in the same direction it keeps that leg nice and safe the left leg wiggles out this is a little bit awkward on the chair we have to find how to just position that leg to make it feel okay you might come out of the chair a bit bobbing find that lovely leg position float the arms up Settle your shoulder blades, reach your fingers apart, turn the palm down. Gazing down the middle fingernail, your right arm. And whenever you're ready to, perhaps an out breath, you float the arms, in breath, back to shoulder height. And you do as many of these as you fancy doing this side. And when you're floating, the right arm up and the left arm down. Reach for the ceiling a little bit so you don't nip at all into your lower back. That sense that your ribs lengthen upwards even though they're moving backwards. So you've got that intention that you've got lovely control. When you've done the number you want to do, your arms come back to shoulder height. Float your arms down. Sit back in your chair. Come to the very front of your chair, sitting properly sort of face on, and then have some cat move to ease. Brilliant. Just going to turn my chair again. So, once you've done a little bit of cat moving, come to the front of your chair again. Legs parallel, and you've got your knees and your ankles and everything lines up. And bring yourself forwards, curl forwards, let the head dangle. With your next in-breath, begin to lift the body, take the arms out at shoulder height, with your in-breath, breathing out, scooping forwards, breathing in, arms wide, breathing out, scooping forwards, breathing in, arms wide, breathing out, scooping forwards, breathing in, arms wide. We're going to twist with the out-breath, little turning, and back to centre with the in-breath. Two more of those to each direction. So you end up doing six in total, you end up doing three to each side. 
And as you're turning, simply noticing that lovely sensation in your spine that frees it up. Lovely. Next time you come back to centre, that's probably around about the right number. You breathe out and take your arms down. Breathe in, sweep your arms up, look up. And breathe out, reach forwards, really reaching, take your fingers to the floor in front of you and then breathe in, bring the arms all the way back up and breathe out, sway, breathe in back to centre, breathe out, sway, breathe in back to centre, one more to each side. Lovely. When you get back to centre, we've got our cactus and our knee. Doesn't matter which way you go. Um, up, leg down, and then the other side, cactus and knee. One more to each side. You might breathe out and breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and then breathe out, bud, down to the heart. Breathe in, flower, eyebrow centre, breathe out, bud to the heart. Breathe in, flower to the top of the head, breathe out, bud to the heart. Breathe in, flower, reach all the way up. Breathe out, bring the bud down into your lap, lean forwards. Let your head dangle. Let it dangle so much that you really start to notice the back of your neck and a bit of lengthening. Super. Start to uncurl. Notice everything that works to have you uncurling. And as you breathe in, take your arms wide. Breathe out, scooping and reaching forwards. Breathe in, arms wide. Breathe out, scooping forwards and reaching, breathe in, arms wide. One more, breathing out, breathing in, turning, breathing out to turn, back to centre with an in-breath. Breathe out to turn, back to centre with an in-breath. One more to each side. Breathing out to turn, breathe in, back to centre, breathe out, arms down. Breathe in, arms all the way up. Breathe out, sway. Two sways to each side. Use your out breath to sway, your in breath to come back to centre. And when you get back to centre, we've got a cactus and a knee, maybe an out breath. You're drawing it down. Breathe in, up. Breathing out. Breathing in, one more to each side, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, bud, all the way down to the heart, breathe in, flower to the eyebrow centre, breathe, bud to the heart, breathe in, flower to the top of the head, breathe out, bud to the heart. Breathe in, flower all the way up, look up if you want to, and then breathe out, bring the bud all the way down, and just fold forwards and take the tips of your fingers to the floor, and then dangle. Let the arms dangle, let the head dangle, your body is resting on your thighs, you're dangling forwards. Bring your hands to the front of your shins and walk your hands up your shins as you lift your body. So your hands come to your knees and then continue to lift your body by walking the hands up the thighs. Super. So wiggle your bottom right the way back into your chair. Maybe you have something under your feet if your chair is a bit tall. Sitting tall in your sitting position. If you would like a mudra, 
we'll have um, Jnana Mudra, um, which kind of key, uh, what would it be called, a, a sort of um, an element maybe though the purpose of it is, is wisdom, to tap into our, our wisdom. So you bring the thumb and the fingertip together to make a circle and you have your other three fingers straight. You've got the same on both hands, palms face up because we want to kind of receive wisdom. And it's receiving wisdom um, in the sense of receiving um, the wisdom to know that we know um, because we already know how we want to respond to given situations, but um, we forget or we have self-doubt. So holding the palms up. And just checking that you've got your feet in a comfy place. Everything else feels comfy, that your spine feels tall. That your, even though your eyes are closed, you're gazing straight ahead. So your face is looking straight ahead. Your eyes are closed and your eyeballs in their sockets are turning down as if you were looking to your lower lid, your lower eyelid. That helps to take our focus inwards. Oh, you might have a sighing out breath to let your shoulders soften away from your ears. Let that softness go all the way down your arms, to your elbows, to your wrists, to your hands, your fingers, a gentle touch as you hold your mudra. Be aware of your breath, be aware of the movement in the ribs, the collarbones, the abdomen. And as you breathe in, encourage the breath to go to the bottom, then middle, then top part of the lungs. As you breathe out, emptying from the bottom to the middle, to the top part of your lungs. Breathing in, bottom, middle, top. Breathing out, bottom, middle, top. Notice that the mind might wander. We just notice it when it happens. Bring your focus back to your breath, breathing in, bottom, middle, top, breathing out, bottom, middle, top. Holding your focus with your breath. And then at some point you'll notice it's wandered again. And you ask it to come back and focus with your breath.
after your next out breath. Allow your focus to return to yourself in your sitting position, releasing your mudra, giving your fingers a wiggle, moving into your wrists. Gently opening your eyes, bring your hands to Anjali Mudra. Namaste everybody. Thank you for coming and joining in. Have a good weekend.